Hello and welcome to the Helmet Head Podcast. Now in today's episode, what I want to talk about is the new Honda CL500 Scrambler that's brand new out for 2023 and it's all over the place at the minute and everyone's got their opinion, including me. Now, I want to start this podcast off with obviously saying that I have got Hondas. So this is not a bash on Honda in any way whatsoever at all. I've obviously got a Honda Monkey Bike that has been made into an overlanding beast by Ashworth Automotive that is currently, well I'm currently riding it around the world leg by leg. I also was looking at buying a GS1200 and because of price point I ended up buying a Honda Africa Twin that I think is absolutely, absolutely awesome. I've only been out on it a couple of times but the Africa Twin just gives and gives. It's the DCT so it's like the automatic version. And I'm going to do my first proper adventure on it coming up in June the 23rd where we're going to be doing a Patriot meet. And on actually the 24th, the next day on the Saturday, we're going to be riding and being led across Wales by a patron. You can check all that stuff out down in the description in the show notes. You can click on the link, check out Patreon if you want to come along to that and ride alongside with me. So I've got two Hondas in the stable for an example. Now, seeing this Honda CL500, I want to be completely honest straight off the board. The first time I saw it, and I was excited to hear that Honda were releasing one, really excited, and I was like, okay, this could be really, really cool. And then I saw it, and my instant like, ah. Well, and the reason why, the reason why for me that I was like, mm, it's not, it's not what I wanted to see, and it's gonna sound really petty, is the exhaust. Now, because they've made the exhaust look, to me, it's black, it was cool, because it goes with the right theme, but because it looks so, plasticky and the kind of way it goes up at the back for me it's like it's just I don't know why but it spoils the look of the bike and that was kind of my initial mm. and then let's just move on to a few of the specs okay so the specs of this bike I need to go back to here right so I'm just literally putting it up on the screen to go through it okay so it's A2 compliant that's awesome for the people that have obviously only passed their A2 here in the UK um, and it's a 471 cc engine. That again, 471 cc is is more on the smaller side. It's more what they aim more as a beginner's bike. I would have loved to have seen Honda release it with the 750. I'd love to see it with the Trans Alpine engine in because it's got 46 brake horsepower, and that's great. Very great for around town. It's a good looking ish bike minus the exhaust. Um, around town going for a Sunday poodle to grab yourself a coffee. Now, my experience with the 46 brake horsepower, now I've had a, a Royal Enfield Himalayan that was awesome, absolutely awesome. I was dead pleased with it, dead proud of it, but I quickly found riding with anybody else with a bigger adventure bike, like if you ride with anybody else with a bigger scrambler, you were constantly gunning it, trying to keep up, constantly revving the pants off of it. And then and so I'd get the rattles of the Royal Enfield, I'm sure the Honda wouldn't get that quite quickly. But because I felt like I needed more power, I wanted more power quite quickly, I instantly was like, I wish this had a 650 engine in it on the Royal Enfield. And that did what I think people will think with the Scrambler. They'll get it, they'll go, actually, this is quite cool. They'll quickly go, actually, I'm going to sell it because I need more. But saying all of that, for somebody that's coming new into biking, yeah, well, my opinion would still be I'd still want to get some of the bigger CC engine because you quickly grow, but I can see the appeal. And of course, it's A2 license applied straight away. Now, seat height on this is absolutely perfect for me at five foot eight. It's seven hundred and ninety mil. Now, seven hundred and ninety is perfect. I'll be able to flat foot that without any issues whatsoever at all. So I like that. I like the idea of jumping on that price point as well is very good for Honda. It's coming in at 5999. I still don't get why that makes you go as cheaper. Really it's it's six thousand pounds. Um six thousand pounds for a Honda brand spanking you in 2023 is a pretty good deal. But there's things I think they could really seriously improve on. So obviously you've got your sort of steel wheels um, or plastic or hard plastic, whatever the hell they are. Now the thing of it is, I generally think you need spoke wheels. On a scrambler, scrambler it looks so much better with spoked wheels. Um, I think looking at the frame, and I will put pictures up if you're watching this on the video podcast on the Helmet Head uh, podcast channel, um, it's kind of got that Ducati scrambler kind of frame with the metal that goes up and it comes off. Um, and that's quite, quite appealing, but looks very city. 
in my opinion sort of a city looking bike and it's got kind of the, a smaller tank as it goes up it looks quite narrow that i think could be quite narrow between your legs it's got a couple of pads on it as well that would be good for gripping if you were actually using it as a scrambler bike because scrambler bikes really are meant to be the kind of bikes you can scramble along and go through forests and stuff like this and go off on these kind of like green lane adventures modern scramblers very much are for looks aren't they they're, they're not they're kind of going well you could do a little bit of light gravel but really they are just for looks and talking about that just for looks i don't think i'd buy it i think it looks good i think it sounds good but it's lacking power for me and it's just that exhaust it really puts me off now for my example if i was going out to buy a scrambler i really like the look of the triumph uh, 1200 xc i really do but the one I'd buy, so for example, right now, so you remember, you can buy this Honda 2023, brand new, 6K, get it sorted, done. But I think you're lacking power, and I think in looks, uh, maybe it's your thing. I'd turn around, if I had my money, if I had the money in the bank right now, if I was going to add the, the bike to the stable, and this is a bike that I generally would go out and buy tomorrow if I had the money, because it just ticks so many of my boxes. The Scrambler, so it's the Triumph Street Scrambler, and you can get a 2019, right? with only 150 miles on it, so basically it's still not running yet, looking absolutely immaculate for £6,785. And the one I'm looking at is currently for sale right now on Superbike Factory. I'm not linked to them at all in any way. It'll probably be sold by this afternoon. But it's got the black and white tank. It's got the oh, beautiful looking exhaust that sweeps along. It's got spoked wheels. It's even got a little rack on the back. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And that would be where my money would be going if I was in the market for a scrambler. And I'd, if I was, had an A2 license, I'd pay the extra, what, 300 quid, 400 quid for the kit and get it restricted down to A2. And that would be the bike I'd buy and insure because that is absolutely stunning. But going back to Honda CL500, if you're looking at it, there is a little bit of a game changer that swings kind of the way you want it to go. They have some awesome accessories that do change the look of the bike. So for example, what you can get on it as well is that you can get the beak and the hand guards that changes the look, makes it look a little bit more streety. And also you can get a side bag that you can get directly factory fitted that again adds to that scramble look that I actually really, really like. I'm a little bit disappointed that they don't have a bash plate option for it to give it that real off-road engine protection and spoked wheel option. Because if it was me, if I bought that, I'd straight away take it to Ashworth Automotive and say to Lee there, can you get a bash plate made up and make this look a little bit more rugged? And he would, and it'd instantly transform the look of that bike. There is some cool parts to it straight out though, even if you get the standard. Obviously it's got the LED lights and it's got the four lights in it that make it look, I think, quite cool. I love that light cluster. It reminds me of like, dare I say it, but more like the Harley Davidson Night Light Hawk thing, what they've got. It looks absolutely awesome. And I think that's, you know, a massive positive. And the more I do look at the CL500, I do like it. I don't like it, and I do like it. It's that Marmite bike. And I look at it I a little bit more, I go, actually, maybe the exhaust isn't that bad. Maybe. It's a tough one. But like I said, my money would be more definitely on the Triumph Scrambler, definitely. But anyway, that kind of wraps up for this little podcast for today. The CL500... It's just six, six, six k. It's not a bad bar bargain. You know, it's Honda build quality. I probably feel different. Maybe if I got it as a press bike for a few days, it's just not where I put my money. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you've enjoyed this podcast. Well, I'm going to leave this podcast here. I'm going to I'm going to end it now. But I just want to turn around and say thank you so much for listening. If you have enjoyed it, please, please, if you're on Apple Podcasts, go and leave a five-star review. It really, really helps push the podcast out further. Likewise, if you're on YouTube, please leave a comment, a like, and share it in a group would be really cool as well. And I can't wait to speak to you on the next podcast. It's going to be cool. We've got some good stuff coming up. Anyway, take care. Ride safe. Bye-bye for now.